Hey YouTube, this is Dustin from Ridgeline Aquatics. In this video, I'm going to be describing the basic principles in setting up a new reef aquarium. I'll provide the basics for understanding what types of equipment you need, and more importantly, why you actually need that equipment. I assume you're watching this because you are considering setting up a new reef aquarium. Excellent. I always like to encourage new hobbyists. I think reef tanks are simply amazing to watch. They're awesome to keep, and let's face it, they make really great conversation pieces. When designing your reef aquarium, your focus should be on ensuring that your future inhabitants are receiving everything needed for their long-term survival. Coral and fish are alive and need the same requirements as any living creature. Food, water, shelter, and a clean environment. While most corals and fish commonly available come from similar environments and thus have similar requirements, it's always a good practice to do some basic research before placing anything in your tank. Occasionally stores will offer livestock that need special care and conditions, and they don't always make that clear upon purchase, even though they should. So what do we need to ensure that we meet the basic needs for your livestock? The list is actually pretty short. To start with, you're going to need an aquarium, obviously. Your aquarium contains the environment suitable to the needs of your livestock. Also, be sure to get a quality synthetic sea salt mix and a hydrometer or refractometer in order to replicate ocean water chemistry. You will need a heater to keep your aquarium environment between 78 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly. To keep the tank environment clean, two things are recommended. A protein skimmer to remove excess nutrients and live rock to filter fish and coral waste from the water. Most corals kept in the aquarium get a lot of their food from photosynthesis and thus require lots of light to survive. There are many different reef-capable lights on the market these days, and you will want to do some research to choose the best light that fits your needs. Finally, you will want to get some quality circulation pumps to keep your tank water moving, as water movement is what brings nutrients to the corals, as well as removes wastes. While there are a wide range of potential additions that will make your job as a reef keeper easier and may help maintain a more stable tank, these basics are the essentials for a no-frills reef tank. As you can see, the basics are not that difficult. There's only a couple of items. Let's spend a couple minutes talking about each of these and giving some more detail as to why you actually need them. Let's begin with your tank. Many people choose an aquarium for all the wrong reasons. While the aesthetics for how your tank will fit into your room are worth considering, there are more important decisions to make regarding tank dimensions that will affect how you decorate your tank and may impact what you can keep in your aquarium. The tank you go with should be able to provide your corals with two important things. One, adequate space, and two, availability to light. Both of these are met by tanks with larger footprints, but lower height. Let's consider two different tanks to help you visualize what exactly I'm talking about. Our first tank is a very common size found everywhere, the 55 gallon. The dimensions of this tank are roughly 48 wide by 13 deep by 20 high. This is a great tank for fish-only displays, as it provides a very large front glass to view the occupants. When it comes to reef tanks, however, it is not my first choice for two important reasons. It is very narrow from front to back, and it is quite tall from top to bottom. This results in a flat display with little depth of view. Decorating this tank is difficult and often results in a giant rock wall that is hard to do much with. Generally speaking, the rock wall does not provide easily usable space for coral placement because corals placed higher on the wall will shade corals below them. It can even be hard to find a ledge to place your coral on in the first place. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot use a 55 gallon in a reef tank. I have seen some absolutely amazing 55 gallons. Just for me personally, it's not my first choice. Compare this with the dimensions of a 50 gallon breeder. This tank is roughly 36 wide by 18 deep by 20 high. You might not think those extra five inches sound like much, but is an increase of almost 40%, and that makes a world of difference when it comes to tank layout. A 50 gallon tank has enough depth of field to allow for visually interesting designs and also should allow plenty of space for coral placement. When deciding on tank size, it is important to remember that larger tanks will be more stable than smaller tanks. In a reef tank, stability is key to success. Even the best maintained tank will have subtle fluctuations in water chem 
chemistry, and smaller tanks are much more difficult to keep stable. Personally, I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than a 20 gallon long for beginners. To be honest though, I would really push people to go with a 50 or even a 75 gallon tank. This is not only because of stability issues, but because for the money, you can get much more out of these tanks for just a bit more than you would spend on a smaller tank. No matter what size aquarium you go with, chances are good that you'll want a larger tank after a while. The next piece of equipment I want to touch on is the protein skimmer. This device functions by mixing tank water with fine air bubbles. The bubbles disrupt the dissolved proteins and force them out of the water into a foam which is collected by the skimmer. There are many different types and styles of protein skimmers on the market, but without going into too much detail, they fall into two large categories that you need to be aware of. One group of skimmers is designed to sit or hang outside the tank. For our basic setup, this is probably ideal. The other group is designed to sit either within the tank itself or in a sump tank connected to the display. There are many great, well-known, and lesser-known brands to consider when making your choice, but new models are constantly coming on the market, so be sure to ask around and read reviews before making your purchase. If there is a reputable local reef aquarium store near you, I always recommend checking with them first. They will often recommend models they use personally and can give you great advice and enable you to see the skimmer in person before making your purchase. Choosing a skimmer can be a daunting task if you really start looking into differences between brands and between models. Don't get too bogged down by the details. For beginners, pick a model that fits your tank size and comes highly recommended. If everybody else likes it, chances are you will too. Of course, if you enjoy agonizing over differences and details, <laughs> choosing the perfect protein skimmer will be an enjoyable task. After protein skimmers, Live Rock is a fairly easy choice to make. Live Rock is a very porous rock and hosts a wealth of beneficial bacteria and other organisms that help clean your tank's water. Today, you can get Live Rock direct from the ocean, or you can get man-made Live Rock. Ocean Live Rock was once a part of the coral reef, but was broken off during storms or by wave action. Depending on where your Live Rock comes from, it will have different shapes, densities, and potential life. More recently, retailers have begun carrying man-made Live Rock. This has not come from the ocean, so you can rest easy knowing that you are not negatively impacting the world's oceans. Whatever rock you go with, you want to find rock that has lots of holes and crevices, as well as rock with a low overall density. That part is key. You can save a lot of money by purchasing a box of live rock from the internet or from your local aquarium store. However, buyer beware. You may get great pieces, or you may not. Personally, I would recommend going to your local reef store. You will pay more, but you will also be able to choose the exact pieces of rock for your tank. A definite plus. When buying live rock, it's important to know if the rock is cured or uncured. Uncured rock is cheaper, but it has just arrived and will be teeming with organisms in varying states of decay. Since live rock is shipped damp, much of the life present on it will die upon arrival. This is great for a new tank with nothing but live rock in it, but do not add uncured live rock to an existing tank. It will kill everything. Cured live rock is more expensive, but will enable you to get your tank set up and running about a month faster than using uncured rock. Due to the fact that the majority of corals we keep are photosynthetic, lights are possibly the single most important piece of equipment for the overall health of your corals. The type of lights and their intensity will greatly affect the overall look of your tank, as well as the type of corals you can keep. There are three main types of reef lights seen today. T5 fluorescent tubes, metal halide bulbs, and LED fixtures. Each has its own pros and cons. Let's briefly compare. Metal halides have long been a favorite of reef keepers. They provide an amazingly bright light that is a great color spectrum for corals and can promote amazing growth. Since metal halides are a point source light, they provide an attractive light shimmer to your tank. The downsides of these lamps is that they are very power hungry, very hot, and generally too large for small tanks. The bulbs should be changed once a year, and they're not exactly cheap. Fluorescent tubes have long been a go-to fixture for reef keepers. The most common fluorescent fixture these days is the T5. These lamps come in a variety of color spectra, and you can mix and match them to create the perfect environment for your corals. 
fluorescent coral pigments really pop under T5s. T5s are much cooler and energy efficient than metal halides, however, you will need to keep many tubes to equal the brightness of one metal halide bulb. Like metal halides, expect to change these bulbs once a year. LEDs are the newest addition. They boast the high intensities of a metal halide, coupled with the colored options of a T5 fluorescent. They have amazing energy efficiency and cool operating temperatures. LEDs can be amazing lights, however not all fixtures are equal. LEDs come in a wide variety of quality in terms of color, spectrum, intensity, and additional options. Be sure to research your fixture before purchase. Decide what is important to you. Most fixtures allow you to adjust the light intensity. It's very important with LEDs. But many will also allow you to adjust the color spectrum. Some fixtures add green and red LEDs to add depth of color to your tank, while some add UV LEDs to give coral fluorescent pigments an extra pop. Some fixtures allow you to program dawn and dusk cycles, while others even include a thunderstorm simulation, if you're into that kind of thing. Much like with protein skimmers, read reviews and check with your local reef store before just buying the first cheap fixture you find. Trust me, quality costs money and you want quality lights or you will have difficulty maintaining coral. To help keep your aquarium warm, you're going to need a heater. When selecting a heater, you will find that heater prices vary widely. More expensive heaters claim to last longer, hold temperatures better, and may have extra features that lower priced heaters don't. When I choose a heater, there are two important things that I look for. A reef heater must be fully submersible, and it must be able to hold a constant temperature. Extra bells and whistles, like LCD temperature displays, are not important to me, but they certainly make adjusting the temperature easier, so it's up to you to decide what works for you. The last important thing to consider is how you will circulate the water in the aquarium. For corals, water flow is literally the difference between life and death. Much like how your life depends on the blood flowing through your veins, each type of coral needs a certain type of water flow. When designing your tank, you will want to create areas of high, moderate, and low flow. This way you will create zones for a range of different corals. Another point to consider is that corals prefer flow that moves in random directions. Flow that always moves in one direction will have an effect on the overall shape of the corals it passes by. Simple, cheap pumps like this one will create a constant flow in one direction. Adding multiple pumps throughout the tank will ensure water is always flowing in every part of your aquarium. Pointing pumps at each other or at rocks can create interesting currents that send water in unpredictable directions. There are a variety of attachments that can cause the flow from this type of pump to move in different and random directions. These do work, but not always for long. On the other end of the spectrum, there are some truly amazing pumps capable of alternating their flow to simulate waves, gyres, and many different flow patterns. Quality pumps are generally seen by most as a solid investment into your tank's future that will repay themselves many times over by promoting coral health. You just need to think about what you want and how much you're willing to pay for it. That does it for this video. Hopefully I've given you a lot to think about and have started you down the path to researching and designing your new aquarium. Make sure you check out local reef stores in your area and look at them with a critical eye. Unfortunately, not all aquarium stores are equal. Some of them I would not set foot in to save my life. Others are simply amazing. Cross-reference what you hear at aquarium stores with things that you find online and from reputable, trusted sources. Of course, feel free to leave questions and comments down below, and I'll assist you as best I can. When you're ready for corals, be sure to check out our website at www.ridgelineaquatics.com. Happy reefing!